Welcome to the wonderful world of weird. Weird. Say it with me. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Alan, and I'm weird. What is weird? Webster's Dictionary defines weird as uncanny, unearthly, eerie, creepy, spooky. <laughs> if you're weird and you know it, clap your hands. Oh. <laughs> That's weird. Today, we will explore the potential and power of weird. I first recognized my proclivity toward weird when I was seven or eight years old. I was a member of the Justice League of America. <laughs> and being a superhero, it only logically followed that I had the power of flight. So I took some of the best cardboard that Maytag washers could make. <laughs> and I fashioned down to aerodynamic specificity, wings. And I leaped off the top of the garage, flapped my arms as hard as I could, and plummeted straight to the ground. <laughs> and as I lie there, writhing in pain, it occurred to me, even in my little seven-year-old mind, it was obvious. <laughs> I needed bigger wings. <laughs> Fast forward to high school, where I became a member of the theater group. Ah, yes, the theater where weirdos are made. <laughs> My first part was Polonius in Shakespeare's Hamlet. I played an old man, and they glued a beard to my face. But then when they pulled the beard off, it pulled out the one long facial hair that I had nurtured for over a month. <laughs> there are sacrifices at being weird. <laughs> I was raised in what I guess most people would classify as a dysfunctional household. But I was able to not only survive, but to thrive because of the love we had in our family. And despite the financial challenges, my sainted mother and grandmother put me through college. And I was able to obtain a Bachelor of Arts degree in theater. I was raised in an environment where my siblings are, and I were made to feel like we were better than everybody else and that there was nothing we couldn't do or be. No matter what the financial restrictions, whenever I came up with some new thing I wanted to do or be, my sainted grandmother would only ask one question. Um, baby, uh, how much the man say it costs? <laughs> and some kind of way, she'd hustle up the money. I don't know if it was nature or nurture, but I was raised in an environment where I was disabused of the satisfaction with average and conformity. Unfortunately, not everyone wins the birth lottery, as Warren Buffett coined the phrase. I dare say many people find themselves in an environment where conformity is rewarded and individuality and creativity is discouraged. And that is so sad because the human being is such a phenomenal being. I mean, we're the only species that has the ability to imagine. We could just conjure up any kind of concept or image and then bring it into physical manifestation. Yet, Society as a whole insists on programming and judging this phenomenal creature as one monolithic type. <coughs> Did you know that there are actually a small group of people on the planet who don't like chocolate? <laughs> That's a whole other kind of weird. <laughs> Yet, they are people just like us, sort of. One person's weird is another person's normal. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I see that we have become so reliant on labels. Labels, labels, labels are for the lazy, yeah? Labels, they're convenient. You know, you either fit my norm or I can just dismiss you as weird. <laughs> Ooh, 
Why do they talk like that? That's weird. Why do they dance like that? That's weird. Who puts raisins in coleslaw? <laughs> That's just too weird. Breaking news. We're all a little weird. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe me, ask the person to your immediate left or right. <laughs> Better yet, wait to get home. Ask your loved, ask your loved ones. They'll probably break out an intervention on your behalf. <laughs> labels, 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 labels. Thousands of children are labeled with all kinds of behavioral disorders such as uh, ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, just because they don't fit the behavioral norms and or learning styles. Yet a university study found that 20%, that is 900,000, of the 4.5 million children identified as ADHD are more than likely misdiagnosed. Yeah. They didn't have ADHD. They were just weird. <laughs> I saw this fantastic episode on CBS Sunday morning. The episode centered around a young man by the name of Christopher. Christopher was 27 years old, extremely high IQ. He graduated from the university with a degree in computer sciences. But for two years after he graduated, Christopher was unable to find a job in his field. He submitted over 600 applications with no luck. Christopher was on the autism spectrum. So his social cues might have been a little weird. Fortunately, Microsoft designed a hiring program specifically designed to people on the autism spectrum. They sent Christopher through a unorthodox interview process where they explored his ability to solve problems in a team setting. And they found that he came up with the most unique solutions to the most complex problems. They hired Christopher as a software engineer, and he is now a major asset of that company. Right on, Christopher. <laughs> Power of weird. I have actually a couple of guys in my weird Hall of Fame. The first is Dr. Yashiro Yakamatsu, also known as Dr. Yakamatsu. Dr. Yakamatsu believed in the mental benefits of long, airless stints underwater. He would dive underwater until the pressure removed almost all of the blood from his brain, and 0.5 seconds before death, he would envision an invention. That's weird. <laughs> Please don't try this at home. <laughs> Dr. Yakamatsu patented the floppy disk in 1952. And he had 3,300 other patents in his 74 years of life. And then my other guy, Albert Einstein. Think we're all familiar with Einstein? Well, little known fact, Albert Einstein struggled with language as a child was a poor developer and never really exhibited any of the traits that you would associate with genius. His own mother called him a dummy. And he had little habits he liked to do, like eating live insects off the ground. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> and he would go bird watching and play his violin and would weep while he was playing. <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> Albert Einstein? developed the theory of relativity, and, and, and received the Nobel Prize for physics. Can you imagine how much buried human treasure there is because of our slavery to conformity and average? There's gold in them thar hills. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, human beings are complex. We're, not, we're diverse, we're not just one thing. Andrea Buccelli, Italian tenor, used to sing in Italian bars to raise money to get through law school, and it worked. He graduated and he practiced law for over a year until he realized that his voice was something special and that his heart was with music. He said that he believed 
that if you have a gift, you have an obligation to share it. So the saddest thing that I could even imagine is to reach the top of the ladder of success only to realize the ladder is leaning against the wrong building. If that's your case, if you are not living the life right now that you boldly proclaimed when your kindergarten teacher said, and what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> it's not too late. You're not too old. Anna Mary Robertson Moses, yeah? also known as Grandma Moses. She didn't take up painting until she was 75. Weird time for a career change. Her paintings are worth the millions now. Harlan David Sanders, also known as Colonel Sanders, didn't start Kentucky Fried Chicken until he was 65. And two biblical giants, Abraham and Sarah, didn't have their first kid until they were in their 90s. <laughs> Whoa, the teen years are going to be rough. <laughs> it's not too late. Any day above six feet is an excellent day. <sighs> I must admit, however, that even though I had the great advantage of positive affirmation in my household and made it feel really special growing up, <sighs> through life, the vicissitudes of life had caused me to kind of submit to conformity. I admit it. And it took my only begotten son, in whom I am well pleased, to awaken me out of a Rip Van Winkle-like slumber. He was working at Harris Bank right out of high school in automated accounting at the age of 18. And then he quit. I said, well, son, what happened? Why'd you quit? He said, Pop, he said, I just couldn't see going doing that same thing every day. And so I, I remember something that I had seen on this Christian television station, and I put it to him. I said, son, what is it you love doing that you could do all day long that you'd even do for free? And immediately he said, cook. I'm like, what in the world does cooking have to do with automated accounting? I said, son, how long have you been thinking about that? He said, since I was nine years old. I was like, whoa, why didn't you ever say anything? And this is what he said. He said, pop, I thought cooking for a living was something too weird for a person to do. I said, boy, go out, do the research, and he did. He ended up uh, graduating from the Chicago Hospitality Institute in Chicago. He, now, those of you who've ever raised teenagers, you know how hard it is to get them into bed on a school night. And getting them up in the morning is like extracting wisdom teeth. This boy, had to be all the way across town at 7 a.m. He was never late, and he never missed. His joy was infectious. And I realized then that I had wasted decades trying to live a life I thought others would approve of because I was too afraid to do what I loved doing because I thought it's too weird. Well, I resigned from the post office and never looked back. Ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime. So I'm going to ask you, what is it you love doing that you do all day long, that you'd even do it for free, no matter how weird? Well, I realize who I am and what my life assignment is. And in the immortal words of Popeye the Sailor, I am what I am and that's all that I am. I am still a superhero. I am actor. <laughs> I see the unseen, I hear the unheard, and I say the unsaid because I am actor. <laughs> I have the ability to download the hardened mind of a character and tell stories that transform lives. And I will do whatever it takes to meet that end, even if it means being oiled from head to toe, wearing a one-piece speed on stage for 45 minutes. <laughs> You'll never be able to unsee that. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do whatever it takes 
no matter how uncanny, unearthly, eerie, creepy, or weird. If you're weird and you know it, clap your hands. 